Uh, good morning. Welcome to the Windsor Star News Cafe. I'm Don McCarthy with Dylan Christie and Star Opinion columnist, uh, Windstar Vander, uh, Chris Vanderdoen. Morning. Yeah, good morning. Us. Yeah, exactly. So first off, uh, our other uh, opinion columnist, Ann Jarvis, uh, she wrote uh, about the race today. Uh, what did you think about the column? And we were just talking about this off camera. She, she took a couple shots at Dilkins. Well, I agree with her premise that there is uh, definitely a, a, a leader and a, and a challenger and a, sort of an outlier. And Dilkins is, in effect, the incumbent. He's the guy to beat. He's, he's pretty far ahead, I think. Um, I, I kind of chuckled to myself a bit at her... Uh, her depiction of him as some sort of uh, unrepentant, snarky, rotten guy. I mean, uh, I've always found him really uh, cheerful. Yeah. Um, and I don't see what he has to be repentant for, and, unless it's disagreeing with Anne, but you know, that's her view of it. Um, you know, Milsa can, can be pretty snarky himself. Uh, I covered him uh, when he was mayor 23 years ago, and uh, he's not entirely a cuddly teddy bear. And of course, Horowitz uh, has all kinds of tricks in his bag, so. Uh, <laughs> But I, I agree with her, assess, her assessment. That's that's the way it's it's uh, it's lining up. Um, I'd like to know where all her money is coming from, but unfortunately, we don't find out about that until after the fact. Which is, you know, maybe one day in the future, politics will have have uh, like the donations will be live, and we'll get to know where it's coming from. Um, like I know I know Dilkins has considerable support from the local business community, but there's two other big money pools out there, and I'd like to know who they're backing. Well, there's the Organized Labor, labor and there's the Ambassador Bridge, which of course has bottomless pockets when it comes to affecting elections and getting what it wants. Yeah. They're backing somebody. Who is it? I bet it's not Dilkins. So who are they, who are they backing? Yeah. Nelson? Horowitz? I mean, Horowitz is spending a lot of money, and I just don't see the guy as spending a lot of his own money, you know? Well, and he was very vague when we sort of asked him the point blank, like, how much are you going to spend? He gave us sort of some uh, nonsensical statement about, I have a budget, I'm going to stick to my budget, and whoop, there it is. And, uh, you know, labor, that's a big pile of money, uh, and it's, it's backing somebody. They, they have an agenda. They want it, uh, they want it uh, driven through, and they know mm -hmm. that Dilkins is the last guy who will drive through the labor agenda. So they're backing somebody. I would guess that it's uh, at least Milson in part, because... Yeah. Milson's already parroting that uh, NDP thing, you know, national auto strategy, as though we don't have one. Of course we have one, it's just it's not the NDP strategy. So they're, they're backing Milson for sure. How, how heavily we'll find out afterwards. Yeah. Okay, a bit of a slow start, I think, sort of to this campaign, but one issue that sort of jumped to the fore, you've already written a column about it, uh, regional policing, uh, the Fraser Institute report, big issue. Yes, it is. Well, it should be a big issue. I mean, at 60 million bucks a year, um, policing is pretty much the second largest item on the budget after welfare, uh, which is gigantic. Um, yeah, I, I understand the chief is already talking about regional policing. This, I think, is, is inevitable. It's, it's going to happen. Um, just a matter of when. But uh, that's not really going to ad address the efficiency issue, I don't think. Uh, you know, they, al they always dangle this carrot that, well, if we go regional, we can save money. Okay, all of you viewers out there who are in the county where, where all of, you know, those 25 municipalities amalgamated, what was your tax break? How much did they save? They don't save anything. When they get bigger, they give them all each other raises because, oh, look, you get more responsibility now. So they all get raises, they hire more assistants. Yeah. You know, regional policing is needed, it's inevitable, but uh, don't imagine that it's going to improve uh, costs or, or, or yeah. lower your taxes or anything. But it would probably be a better a better police force. Why are the per capita policing costs so high? It can't just be the border and the, the drunk Americans. I mean, the casino. Well, like, why border, are they so high? Border. We got we got CSIS, we got the RCMP, we got the OPP, we got the border That's guards. True. I mean, we don't need Windsor police to do that. We got four or five other layers above them. So no, I think a lot of it has to do with with Windsor's old bugaboo, um, uh, local work culture, and um, a lot a lot of padding was was built into the system over the years. You know, they saw how, how well auto workers were doing in the 90s and they wanted some of it too, yeah. and so they got all sorts of extra hires. Well, we are like what, some of the best paid, and there used to be a battle always between York Regional Police and Windsor Police. York would get a new contract, then we'd one up them by a penny, and then it would keep going like well, that. I always thought it was Kingsville and Essex who were the highest paid <laughs> in the country, but uh, if they're the highest paid in the country, then they got to be the highest paid in the world. But anyway. Wow. Um, now, you've already had a column on this, and uh, that same day when the Free Institute uh, report came out, uh, Dawson Chen had an article that he quoted the, the chief saying that this isn't for Windsor. Windsor uh, Police Service doesn't have the most inefficient force in the country. It's the CMA. But then you went out and said that while it might be the CMA, Windsor still has the most inefficient. Can you just talk to that? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a mathematical equation. You can't really argue with the math. I mean, 
the chief because of his position. Of course, that's right. what he'd say. Oh no, we're not as bad as that. But yeah. but he also did admit that while well, these numbers aren't very good, um, right. somebody has to quantify them. Uh, an economist uh, did so. Um, there's anybody can look it up online. There's 64 pages of statistics and methodology and and reasoning. And, and, and footnotes. It's, this isn't just made up on the fly. It's a really good study. And even if they aren't the worst in the country, they're the second worst by just a hair. So, I mean, this is semantics. It's, it's way too expensive. Um, the crime has plummeted. They shouldn't have that many bodies at 100 grand a year. That's what they make. Actually, one thing I didn't have room for in my column they might make about $100,000 a year, but the cost of putting one cop on the street is gigantic because there's all the equipment and backup services. It averages around 144000 a year. That was three years ago for the OPP, and it ranges as high as $185,000 for a Durham region. And there goes your regional, you know, where's the savings there? So anyway, the, the, the chief, of course, has to defend his department, but um, I think these numbers are indefensible and somebody should do something about them. Some local politician should pledge to do something about them. Okay, well, hopefully that, you know, there's an election going on, now's the time. Yes. Uh, there's something else going on, a Razor Reader, okay, that's tomorrow morning. I'm going to be out uh, in Amherstburg at a Tim Hortons uh, with uh, Wayne Hurst, and uh, Dylan's going to be running the website. Sometimes You're going to be out. Uh, uh, I'll be at Essex at uh, Tim Hortons, uh, drop by and uh, make a donation or heckle, whichever you choose. <laughs> yeah, exactly, a uh, Razor Reader. All the money stays local. Vander, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, Thank you. Don't be a stranger.